What's up everybody, Will Borza here, the LA Recordist. Today we're talking about LUFS, loudness, dynamics, and mastering for streaming services. It's the analog vlog. It's a vlog! Analog. Boy, is it windy out here. All right, let's start with a definition. LUFS stands for loudness units in relation to full scale. LUFS, for short. LUFS is currently one of the best ways to measure the perceived loudness of a track, and it's being used right now to normalize or standardize or average all the music on streaming platforms such as, like almost all of them, I think all of them except for SoundCloud maybe, and some of them might not use exactly LUFS, but uh, something very similar, something that could be easily measured using LUFS. The whole point behind normalizing stuff is that uh, you as the consumer, the person that is making playlists, you can put a playlist together that includes you know, a jazz ballad and Skrillex, and you don't have to reach for the volume knob when one song leads into the other. Pretty simple, right? It's a good thing. Normalization, very good thing. So LUFS and then there's the LU, and if you want to sound really smart, the difference between LUFS and LU, loudness units, is that you would say, uh, my track was minus 13 LUFS and I turned it up to LU and now it is minus 11 LUFS. Uh, LU is basically just the loudness unit, it's, it's the same as a dB. If you turn things up to dB, you've turned them up to LUs. LUFS is always in relation to full scale, digital zero. So if you're talking about something in relation to zero, that's LUFS. If you're just talking about loudness up or loudness down, that's LUs. The more you know. So we're here today at the Mulholland Dam. This is, uh, this is in Hollywood, sort of. I mean, that's Hollywood over there. That's the Hollywood sign there. So this is, this is Hollywood. This is the Hollywood Reservoir. It's uh, just a bunch of water. Mulholland Dam was built by William Mulholland. He's the guy that they named the street after. Beautiful street in the Hollywood Hills. Definitely worth um, checking out when you come here to LA, if you haven't. It carries like 2.5 trillion gallons of water. It's something crazy like that. Uh, it has beautiful architecture, and it works as a very effective brick wall limiter so that all this water does not peak and flow right into the heart of Hollywood. So. There you go. Our destination today is the Hollywood sign. So my personal favorite way up is to park on Lake Hollywood Drive and hike up past the wisdom tree. What is the wisdom tree? I'll show you in just a second. This is the wisdom tree. Now, rumor has it it was planted here as a Christmas tree like 25 years ago, I think 1995. There's a sign over there that said, I'm sorry about the wind. I am really sorry about the wind. Planted around 1995 and uh, miraculously it survived and it grew into this tree. It's very hard not to see this tree from like literally anywhere in Los Angeles. That is the valley that way, more of the valley. That's the ocean over there, downtown LA. Like, if you're in LA, you can see the wisdom tree. here at the wisdom tree, how about a little loudness wisdom? I've heard it said that the present and future streaming normalization model is going to favor dynamic mixes and masters over hyper compressed mixes and masters. I could not disagree with that statement more. Whoa, buddy, you're out of line. No, 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 calm down. Here's, here's why. Um, I believe that while EQ and saturation and stereo width and, and even some compression and stuff like that is, is subjective, it, it's all a matter of taste of the, the engineer and the artist and the people working on the record. I believe that there is a correct loudness for every song, and the song itself is what dictates that, not the streaming platform that it's playing back on. 
a well-seasoned mastering engineer will be able to hit that loudness mark every time. Okay, so just as a point of reference, we started way down there at the Mulholland Dam, and then we walked, that's where I parked my car on that street. That's the beginning of the trailhead. Where those people are sitting is, this is a sheer cliff, but the trail is beyond that, and it comes up over here to the wisdom tree. If you continue along the ridge, that way, there's the Hollywood sign. Okay, so let's talk about application. Most streaming companies, the sound is the... Most streaming companies are normalizing to a level somewhere between like minus 12 and minus 16, and it depends on the platform. Like iTunes right now is minus 16. Spotify right now I think is minus 13. Uh, but, but here's the thing, it's a moving target. Yesterday, YouTube was minus 12, and today someone was doing some readings and they were coming out with minus 16. Now, sometimes this has to do with the fact that, you know, it's not exactly LUFs that they are using to calibrate, but, but minus 12 and minus 16 are very different, and, and, and that's definitely YouTube doing something on their end to change their algorithms. I guess my point is this, those LUFs readings are not a target for you and your song and your mastering. Do not master your song to minus 16 because iTunes is playing back at minus 16. If you did, chances are, I mean, with the exception of, you know, maybe some jazz, some classical music, minus 16 is very, very quiet. It's, it's dynamic. If you were to master a rock song to minus 16, it is not gonna sound full and tight and beefy and thick and awesome like a rock song should. If you're gonna do hip hop or EDM, same thing. You know, EDM needs to be pumping. EDM sometimes has, you know, uh, uh, luffs ratings of, of minus six. Like, it's not uncommon for major label stuff to be minus six, minus five, minus four luffs. And that's integrated. That's not, that's not like momentary. Like, like, I've worked on some stuff with Howie that it just has to be loud. The, the music calls for the, it to be loud. Minus six is, where it sounded right. Okay, so these platforms, minus 13 or whatever, don't master your song to minus 13 because it's gonna be playing back at minus 13. It's not gonna sound right. Trust. So Will, how do you determine a song's proper loudness? Great, I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you. The song itself is going to dictate how loud it needs to be. I, I don't know how better to explain that, but I can tell you one of the really great ways to discover where the song should be, or at least close to it. What you need for this is a limiter that has a constant gain function. Uh, I know that Slate Digital's FGX has one, and I know that FabFilter's Pro L has one. There's plenty of limiters out there that have a constant gain function built into them. And the idea is that as you turn up the gain into the limiter, it simultaneously at the same amount turns down the output peak threshold and so things are going up and down at the same time. You will discover, as you turn things up, it sounds better and better and thicker and fuller and awesomer and awesomer, and then you hit a point where the threshold of the peak limiter starts lowering more than you're putting gain into it. That is sort of the breaking point. As soon as you find that spot where it, where it dipped, and now it's getting quieter and, and crunchier, is that a drone? That's a drone. Good times. So yeah, there's gonna be a point where it, where it shifts and it starts to sound worse and quieter and, and garbled, garbled up and bad. And, and that is that moment right there. And if you just, you find that tipping point and then you back it off a little bit and you're gonna be right in that spot where the song wants to be. That correct loudness for the song. All right, well that's it for wisdom. The next stop, the Hollywood sign. Farewell, Wisdom Tree. Thank you for your wisdom. Our next trail leads us that way. So that's the way back. That's the way forward. What does it say? The Wisdom Tree, Burbank Peak, Hollywood sign, Coanga Peak, Mount Lee Summit, back of Hollywood sign. Good times. Let's go. <laughs> Ba ba ba
I live over there. Right behind that town, that's the, that's the Hollywood sign. And uh, over here, Wisdom Tree. Santa Monica. Now, fun fact, this is the Hugh Hefner Overlook here, looking over Los Angeles and the surrounding area. You can even see all the way up to Catalina Island today, which is just amazing. Hugh actually donated a lot of money to make this land public, because before it was private, and uh, there were some developers that wanted to build some, like, mega mansions up here, and uh, Hugh and... Aileen Getty, part of the Getty family. A bunch of these people were like, no, this should be private, this should be public land, everyone should be able to come and visit it. And so, uh, he donated a whole lot of money, they put a, his name on uh, that plaque, and now uh, we can hike here. So, thank you, Mr. Hefner, good guy Hef. <laughs> well, yeah. there you go. Yeah. That is the closest you can legally get to the Hollywood sign. There's a big fence right here. There are bountiful security cameras and there's a cop car right through that gate waiting to arrest you if you try anything funny. So there you go, Hollywood sign behind a fence. So in conclusion, how do you master a song for different streaming platforms. Well, you don't master the song for the platform, you master the song for the song. Mastering the song for the song will make sure that it shines brightly on all platforms. The present and future loudness normalization does not favor dynamic songs over hyper-compressed songs. It never has, it never will. It does favor good songs over bad songs because now everyone can upload to Spotify. Everyone can upload to iTunes. It is a straight democracy. The songs that are good get more lessons. Also the songs that have major label support and marketing team get more lessons. But that's not the point. Don't be discouraged. Make really, really good songs. Just make the best song you possibly can and put it out there and master the song. Get the loudness right for the song, not for the platform. Like my very good friend Nick Lorenzo says, don't give a fluck about loudness normalization. Okay, so now I have about an hour and 10 minutes to get back down the hill and drive to downtown LA to pick up the Mrs. Records because she's getting off work at four and it is 10 to three. Oh boy, uh, I think I can make it. I hope I can make it. If you wanna continue this conversation, head over to the Analog Mob Facebook group and we'll talk about loudness, normalization, LUFS, mastering for digital platforms, all that good stuff. It's a fun crowd in there, very nice people. Uh, you'll love it. So go to Facebook, search for the Analog Mob, you'll see the uh, thing on the... Yeah, I gotta go. See you guys next time. Peace.